years have been corrupted? Well, it was, it was exactly because of morale issues and personnel retention issues and so forth uh, that we began to make additional investments in the Air Force in the nuclear mission here in quality of life, uh, in the uh, installations here, in the professional development of people who specialize in this mission, um, in looking at their career paths, at the rank structure, um, and, and also, I think importantly, as I was mentioning uh, earlier today, in helping, uh, in, in emphasizing the importance of what they do and the future trajectory uh, of the nuclear triad. I think that all that helps, uh, Bob, because it is a mission that requires, as I said, unparalleled excellence. And you can't take that for granted. It's something that we've enjoyed over the over a long period of time that the people you saw in front of you today uh, represent, but we've got to keep it up. And, and, and we realized, I think, a few years ago that we weren't doing enough. And, and that's why it was important to be doing the things that we began there. We continue to look at it, and, and, and obviously we're continuing to make investments in it. Uh, well, with respect to the, the uh, uh, second part, I'll let Secretary Kerry and others make these determinations about what things are called. And I, was, whatever you call it, what's going on now in Syria is tragic, uh, disgraceful, preventable, and uh, as I think... Uh, 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 everyone around the world has been emphasizing uh, over the weekend uh, 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 Russia and the Syrian regime bear responsibility for the uh, violence particularly against civilians um, and the only way to give the Syrian, end the Syrian civil war and give the Syrian people uh, the respite from this savagery that they so uh, deserve is a political resolution. Uh, and it's important that Secretary Kerry has been trying to pursue that. Um, and obviously uh, the signs based on Russian and uh, Syrian behavior are not encouraging in that regard, but the fact remains uh, and, uh, of their responsibility and of the necessity, uh, 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 especially for Russia, uh, to do what it said it was going to do when it intervened in Syria, uh, which was to, to uh, 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 help put an end to the Syrian civil war through political transition and, and fight uh, ISIL. And uh, that's not what it's been, it's been uh, doing. And uh, with respect to the first part of your question, uh, uh, June, uh, the, 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 that you asked this question and that others in the region including Iran, by the way, are looking at this turbulent situation and trying to find opportunities and to, to deepen the tragedy of the Syrian civil war is not the direction anybody should be headed. Uh, uh, the, that, 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 well, that's not the direction anybody should be headed. Uh, do you have a plan for when you're going to ask Congress about that and how range and what that dollar figure might look like? 
Uh, 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 yes and yes. Um, the, I, I, I said way back in the spring, and, it, and, and, and I, one should say always that we submit an OCO uh, request at the beginning of the year, which is about the cost of war. It's in the nature of war that you can't know at the beginning in detail what it's going to cost. So I said we were going to be sending a supplemental request, and it actually reflects a good thing, which is that we are seizing upon opportunity to destroy ISIL in Syria and Iraq, and therefore to add some resources to hasten that. And we're seeing opportunities to strengthen what we've long been embarked on in Afghanistan with Operation uh, Resolute Support uh, there with uh, uh, our coalition uh, partners uh, there. So this reflects the seizing of opportunities uh, by the president, uh, opportunities that are good uh, uh, for us. So it's a very natural thing to do and, and a good thing to do. And we will ask, and there is a range, and we're going to continue to refine that. And as I told Congress, when I appeared before the, uh, our uh, committee, uh, our Armed Services Committee on the Senate, uh, th that we would uh, continue to refine those estimates while they were out of session and have a, a, a completed estimate when they come back in November, uh, hopefully to complete the budget, uh, of course, in its entirety, because of course it's the fiscal year, I forget what the date is, the 26th of September now. For the eighth consecutive year in a row, the fiscal year is coming to an end without a federal budget. So I would be grateful come November, uh, not only for approval of a adjusted OCO uh, budget, but for approval of the, of the budget of the federal government. We, we, we have a range. We're going to refine it, and they'll 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 get a refined number when they return in November, hopefully to pass uh, a, a budget for the federal government. Well, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll say before the same thing I, I've, uh, uh, I'll say again the same thing I've, I've said before, which is we're constantly looking for opportunities further to accelerate the defeat of ISIL in Iraq. We're looking for those opportunities. Obviously, the taking of any of those opportunities would need to be, as we do everything in Iraq, uh, with the permission of uh, the government of Iraq, and in particular with Prime Minister uh, Abadi. Uh, in the past, whenever we have seen such opportunities, the President Obama has always approved them, and so has also Prime Minister uh, Abadi. And so when the time comes, uh, we'll follow the same process to seize the opportunities um, uh, going forward as well, because this is a good thing when we have the opportunities to hasten the defeat of ISIL. Uh, no, it is not. Uh, and I can say that because the um, Russian nuclear activities, which are not only different in size, but in their nature in some respects uh, from the past, began before the United States made any decisions about recapitalizing uh, its triad. And second, uh, 
and the other, the second piece of uh, 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 evidence is, as I noted in my speech, that for 25 years the United States has not built new nuclear systems to replace the ones that are here. That's why it takes such heroic effort by such skilled people as you see here at Minot to keep weapon systems that are 30 and years and older uh, going. So the United States has not, in fact, been doing that. So it can't be the cause of anything that takes place in Russia or China or North Korea. Um, and so the, the facts belie that proposition. That's the number we're planning on now. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable to, that it'll, I'm sure it'll be constantly evaluated and reevaluated as the program continues. I'll just remind you that the B-21 program was, was largely conceived of, including the size of the buy, but the nature of it, not just with the nuclear mission in mind. It was for... Um, conventional missions, and we decided also to give it the capability to execute the nuclear mission. But it's dual purpose, and both purposes would go into it, would go, into, go, to, go into determining the size of the program as we now foresee it. Well, with respect to the force, force improvement program, um, uh, that was, as I said earlier, an essential thing uh, for us to embark on. I think it came out of a recognition that we had some force management issues here that we needed to address and address promptly. Uh, that decision was made a few years ago. Uh, what I can tell you on the basis of my visit today was that in talking to airmen here, it, they very much appreciate and feel the effects of that. And that tells me that the reasons that it was put in place by the Air Force and why we're carrying it out are bearing fruit. And I explained some of that earlier about the necessity to do it. And with respect to the recapitalization of the ICBM force, that is part of our plan. Uh, we do intend to recapitalize uh, the ICBM forces. If you've seen it here, it's still performing excellently and is a strong uh, deterrent, uh, but it is getting older. And so, as the President has indicated, uh, we do intend to uh, recapitalize uh, uh, all three legs of the triad. We have plans to do that and to do that affordably, which we will do uh, in both the case of the ICBM leg and has been discussed, has been discussed a little bit, the ICBM and, uh, uh, leg, uh, I, I'm sorry, the SLBM leg, the ICBM leg, and by the way, the bombers and the cruise missiles uh, on the bombers, which I'll just remind you were developed some decades ago uh, in light of the need for an assured deterrence, deterrent uh, to be uh, able to penetrate air defenses. That's one of the ways that it is assured and therefore deterrence is strengthened. Those arguments were good then and they stand up now and that's why 
uh, our, the president's budget uh, uh, begins that those recapitalizations. And with that, Peter, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, it's okay. okay. Sorry, I didn't. All right. Good. I, I, I do not think that as long as nuclear weapons exist that there is a replacement for nuclear deterrence. That's the foundation of our view and the President's view, which I cited, uh, that as long as nuclear weapon exist, weapons exist, the United States need to have a safe, secure, and reliable um, uh, deterrent. The world has changed, of course, and as I indicated, there are some in who, um, whom I, am, I grow concerned about, as I put it in the, the speech, their understanding of what has kept us safe for so long. Uh, and uh, uh, I think it is a d stable deterrence uh, that has done that. And I think, as I also indicated in the question I was asked about President Kennedy's legacy early on, that nuclear nonproliferation, uh, combating nuclear terrorism, um, making sure that uh, our, uh, det our deterrent remains as it is today safe and secure as well as effective. I mean, all of those things remain true as the years go by as well. So it's not just deterrence, but it's the need for excellence, for perfection, and the profoundest respect when it comes to matters like nuclear weapons. There's nothing else like them on Earth. And that's what this place and its tradition uh, exemplifies, and that ain't going anywhere as long as there are nuclear weapons. Thank you.